our last Wednesday worship of the academic year. I am Amy Gauthier, the campus ministry associate here at University Lutheran Church and Lutheran Campus Ministry at ASU. So we are so happy that you are here joining us and we are sad to see the academic year close. Um, but at the end of this worship service, we will be honoring our graduates because we couldn't have a graduation banquet this year together. So stick around for that and let's begin with song. of forgiveness. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may become the loving and merciful people you created, up, created us to be. Help us grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sin. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins, known and unknown. 
done and left undone, may we live and serve you in newness of life. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for your gift of Jesus Christ, who brought us your forgiving love. When we are empty, fill us with that love. When we are down, lift us with that love. When we are tired, renew us with the presence and love of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Welcome into the sanctuary of University Lutheran Church, Lutheran Campus Ministry, here in Tempe, Arizona. This is our final Wednesday worship of the academic year. Finals are this week for our students. Next week, we would normally have our graduation banquet, but of course, that is not possible. So we will recognize uh, our graduates, uh, those students that are graduating. Uh, we'll be recognizing them a little bit in this service, and then we will try to make up that banquet once this is over and see how we might do that. We do continue to have Sunday worship every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. We will switch to 9 a.m. on Sunday, May 17th, and that's where we'll remain throughout the summer. We invite you to be part of those worship services as well. A reading from Matthew. And Jesus then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus perceived their thoughts and said, Why do you think evil in your hearts, for which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. Thanks be to God. Well, those of you who have been following along with our Wednesday worship services know that our theme has been forgiveness. In fact, the theme has been for, is forgiveness enough? Well, this evening, we have a treat for you. We have a guest preacher with us this evening, all the way from Wittenberg, Germany. We have with us Dr. Martin Luther, who's going to preach on the text that you just heard read. And uh, I, I worked with him a little bit, you just need to know. I worked with him a little bit because normally his sermons are about 40, 50 minutes. And so I worked on his sermon, edited it a bit, so it'll be a much more normal length of time, and you can thank me for that later. But at this time, we would like to welcome into our pulpit and into our sanctuary, Dr. Martin Luther. Danke sehr, Herr Pastor. Der erste Dinge. Oh, das ist nicht Deutschland. Das ist Amerika. Was fragst du? Was fragst du hier? English. English. Oh, the language of that fool, King Henry. Okay, well, let me begin again. And the first thing I would like to say is how good it is to be here and how good it is to preach via this means of which I have no understanding, but am assured it will go to many people. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The first thing we will talk about today in our gospel is nothing less than the sum total of the gospel. For it is the gospel that teaches us about the forgiveness of sins. Now this teaching is for Christians, of course, because we receive the forgiveness of sins only through Christ and only in his name. Many peoples have produced fine long books about good works and human responsibilities, but in truth, they have written nothing about the remission of sins. 
Under the Romans, we were so blind that we thought we could achieve the forgiveness of sins through things like vows and pilgrimages and certain prayers and certain phrases and deeds. And so we struggle to gain the forgiveness of sins in the name of our own good works rather than the name of Christ. But the forgiveness of sins is freely given to us for Christ's sake. And our sins are remitted only in his name. Thus, whoever forgives my sins in the name of Christ truly forgives them. So a thought that should never cross our mind is this. Although the paralyzed man in our text was a sinner, one who even bore in his body the punishment for his sins, Christ pronounced him righteous, saying, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. But I, since I am totally submerged in sins, I have no Christ who could liberate me from them. No. But here is where we must recall Christ's own testimony. He said, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. So the good news of forgiveness is surely meant for us also. The second thing we want to talk about is related to Christ's word. Take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. If Christ urges the paralyzed man to take heart, to be of good spirit, the man apparently had a troubled conscience because happy people do not require comfort. This observation is confirmed by the fact that those secure and carefree spirits which have no sense of sin do not, in fact, seize upon the forgiveness of sins. Christ depicts the very nature of sin here. Sin accuses people and condemns them, driving them to despair. If I recognize that I am a sinner, I will, of course, assume that God is angry with me. As Paul says, for the law brings wrath. But if God hates me, then I am hated by all angels and all creatures. Thus, it is finally unavoidable that I will be driven to despair just as my friend, Dr. Krauss in Halle, oppressed by his sin, cried out, Behold! I see how Christ, the Son of Man, accuses me before God in heaven. This is the nature of sin. But the God we imagine is the God we get. Which is why Dr. Krauss could not withstand these terrors, as indeed no mortal could, and thus took his own life. In this way, sin condemns us, and no human power can prevent it. Without the help of Christ the mediator, without his intervention. Here, Christ consoles the paralyzed man who is terrified by his sins, saying that he should be of good spirits. Then he calls him son. Moreover, he says that his sins are forgiven, that the father and the man are reconciled, and that the man believes in God the Father. May we also believe in the name of Christ that we have the forgiveness of sins. And more when my neighbor says to me, take heart, my brother. Or when the neighbor says to you, take heart, my sister. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Christ. We should confidently believe him for what he says is most certainly true. This, in all its simplicity, is the doctrine of forgiveness of sins. In teaching it, Christ wants to liberate us from the evil of agreeing with the impious ones by charging that in daring to forgive sins. We could actually say God blasphemes against God. Christ blasphemes against God. If one had asked the Pharisees how one should gain the remission of sins, they would have answered, we are made righteous by observing the ceremonies of the Mosaic law. But God commands only that we hold fast to Christ and listen to him. It is, after all, God who says, listen to him. And what he teaches is the forgiveness of sins. The third part of this sermon is based on Christ's word to the paralytic. Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. 
In order to show that he is the authority to forgive sins, Christ confirms it with this sign. He heals the paralytic. Now that he has pardoned his trespasses, he orders him to take up his bed and go home. In other words, now that through Christ, the paralytic is reconciled with God the Father, he should diligently carry out the work of his vocation at home. Thus, the Romans teach falsely when they say that the forgiveness of sins must be earned by works. Christ teaches differently. Namely, that works must follow forgiveness. You must mark this well. Our fear, of course, is that after we are gone, other teachers will come and claim that works must come first, just as the Romans have taught up to now. They cry that this teaching of ours, this doctrine of the free remission of sins, is too pleasant. They say it is too sweet a deal, whereby no one has to do anything. These people are totally ignorant, which is why they speak this way about our teaching. They've never known the power of sin. If they once felt its danger, they would speak differently about it. Christ forgives sins freely. He is no usurer, no shopkeeper in the forgiveness of sins market. He will not collect interest on the forgiveness that he freely gives. Now that we have received from him the forgiveness of our sins, all he wants is that we do the work of our vocation, that we help our neighbor. Thus bear it the fruit of our faith. Amen. Now comes the time in the service for prayers of the people. Usually we would ask the congregation for who or for what needs praying for, but since we're scattered, we can't really do that. So as I've suggested in previous videos, maybe pause or wait until the end of the video and call, text, or email a friend and ask what they would need for. Let us pray. Almighty God, we hold so many in our hearts tonight. We hold the world as this pandemic ravages people. We pray for healers. We pray for people on the front lines. We pray for peace for them. We pray for their health and we give a prayer of thanks for their dedication. We send a prayer to you for teachers and students and all school faculty as this year has drawn to an odd close. May those students who are graduating or moving to a new grade know that we celebrate with them even though we are far apart. We pray for businesses and our nation as we begin to open again. We pray that your guidance is over our leaders who will make the best and the safest choices for us. We pray for our communities of faith, that the people in them know that even though we are far apart, we are still one loving community gathered under God's name. And we pray now for those we name silently in our hearts. And I ask you to join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, since we can't be together, there are gonna be a couple pictures coming up during our video of our graduates who 
We wish we could so celebrate together and with a banquet, but maybe another time. So if you will please join us in celebrating our graduates from ASU who have dedicated so much of their time and their energy and their love to Lutheran campus ministry. Each and every year at the Sunday following the close of the academic year, we have an order for the closing of the academic year in our worship uh, toward the end of service. Normally what we do is have all involved in the academic enterprise stand that students and grad students, faculty and staff, anyone associated uh, with our campus ministry in those ways. We are people whom God has called to fulfill our baptismal vocation in this academic setting. As the academic year ends, therefore, it is appropriate that we give thanks to God for its learning and growth producing experiences, for its opportunities to witness to the gospel and to serve God's people, and for God's gracious presence and strengthening throughout its duration. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the giver of the gift of the mind, the source and revealer of all knowledge and truth, and the one who calls us to witness and to serve wherever we are. We are grateful for another year of learning, for the new ideas that have stimulated and challenged us, and for the new interests and concerns to which our studies have led us. We are grateful also for many kinds of experiences which we have had this year, and for the relationships which have enriched our lives. Thank you for having guided, supported, and blessed all who have learned on this campus and all who have taught. Thank you especially for your steadfast and loving presence, which has been mediated to us in particular through the worship and the fellowship of this community of faith. We lay before you our stewardship of the year now past. For our successes, we give you the glory. For our failures, we commit ourselves to your compassion and mercy. Go with us, God, now that the year has ended. Remain with us and continue to support and direct us wherever we are, still in this place, at home, in a summer internship or job or beginning a career. Inspire us in whatever context and circumstance to take up again the mission and the ministry to which you have called us and the whole church. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We close this academic year in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we have our brief goodbye through the service of farewell and Godspeed, as we wish our graduates well, just a few words. Normally at a banquet, I would share more of these words uh, with them, and there would be others sharing words as well, but just a few words to these graduates, some of whom have been here four years, some of whom have been here almost 10 years through graduate school and law school as well as undergrad. To you, dear graduates, these are strange and anxious times. Strange and anxious for all of us, actually. Now, we have all sorts of transitions through life. We go to school from being home. We go into kindergarten after preschool, whatever it is. We go to elementary school. We go to junior high, high school, college. Our first job, we drive. We get a driver's license. So many transitions throughout our life. You have done a number of these, even in your young adult life already. And what that means is you have skills that you have acquired and developed and fine-tuned along the way. As you now enter this new time of graduation, for graduate school, for career, for, well, you're really not certain quite what yet. It can be an anxious time. It's always an anxious time after graduation. But with our current situation with COVID-19, of course, it's especially anxious. 
but you have these skills. They have not abandoned you. You have these skills of adaptation, of flexibility, of learning, growing, changing. They will serve you well now. They will serve you well in all your years ahead as you continue to grow, to change, and adapt. And don't forget that here, here you had your faith nurtured, and it too grew. And as I've noticed with you over the years, it too has changed in many ways from sort of a childlike faith to a more mature adult faith that serves you well as a young adult. Use that faith. That faith can help us through those times when those skills of ours misfire. And now, at this time, realize too, dear graduates, this is an anxious time for everyone, not just you, for all we are going through. And together, together with our faith, we will get through this. You will get through this. We wish you well. We're proud of you. We're proud of what you've done here. We're proud of what we know, the kinds of things we know you will do in the years ahead. And we ask you, please, please keep in touch. For what I've discovered over the years here is that pride of ours continues to grow as we hear back from you. Godspeed, dear friends. And now it is that typical bittersweet moment for us that we have each and every year when we bid our graduating students farewell and wish them well in whatever career path or further academic pursuits in which they engage. Alex, George, Jake, Caitlin, Morgan, Patrick, Trenton, and Walter. As you leave our congregation, we wish to bid you farewell. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said, I'm going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Lord God, our Father, you kept Abraham and Sarah in safety throughout the day of their pilgrimage. You led the children of Israel through the midst of the sea, and by a star you led the wise men to the infant Jesus. Protect and guide us now in this time as we set out to travel in our different ways. Make those ways safe and our homecoming is joyful. And bring us at last to our heavenly home where you dwell in the glory with your Son and the Holy Spirit, God, forever. Amen. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. When you, who are graduating, came to this community of faith, we rejoice to welcome you into the mission we share as the people of God. In this community, you have come to know and to share God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. God has blessed you in this community. And God has blessed us through you. We encourage you to continue to receive and share God's gifts in whatever faith communities with which you will unite as you leave here, knowing that you are still united with us in the body of Christ and the mission we share. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you 
for the work and witness of your servants, Alex, George, Jake, Caitlin, Morgan, Patrick, Trenton, and Walter. They have enriched this community. They have shared their gifts with their colleagues, with their friends, with their family, with all of us here. Now bless and preserve them at the time of transition. Day by day, guide them and give them what is needed, friends to cheer their way, and a clear vision of that to which you are now calling them. By your Holy Spirit, be present in their pilgrimage, that they may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in peace, dear friends. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then we will end with a song.
Father 